very good evening to you. I'm Lisa Lord with the CBC Evening News in our top story. Prime Minister Frandell Stewart has knocked the use of the term yard foul, which often describes people who publicly align themselves to political parties. He made his point during a service at the St. Paul's Anglican Church, marking the 60th anniversary of the Democratic Labour Party. Prime Minister Stewart drew comparison to those whom he says join social clubs and are referred to as members, contrary to those who join political organizations. That is why I have to defend politics, you see, because it takes people committed to something, committed to a vision of the future, to take the decision that they want to publicly identify with the ideals, the policies, and the programs of this or that political party. And I'm not making any distinction here between political parties now because I hear this language used too often. Well, almost 185th form students of the Combermer School have apparently settled in well in their new surroundings at the Erdison Teachers Training College. The students moved to the new location this morning and Principal Vera Paris says the transition has been smooth. Peter Thorne. Reports. The six classes of Fifth students were busy attending classes at Erdiston Teachers Training College when CBC visited the institution. Principal of Combo Mayor Vera Paris told CBC he was happy with the transition, noting that the sooner the students settle in, the better for all concerned. He says plans are also in train for the transition of the six form students to Erdiston Teachers Training College on Wednesday and Thursday. Combo Mayor has eight six forms, representing a total of over 200 students. Mr. Paris says the Waterford Institution will be industrially clean and work undertaken to retrofit some areas in a bid to resolve its environmental problems. The closure and cleaning follows complaints about environmental problems there and gas being present in the atmosphere. Mr. Paris says he's hoping that by next week all Combo Mayor students will be back at that institution. Peter Thorne, CBC News. Thank you, Peter. And meantime, Education Minister Ronald Jones says he is pleased with the pace of ongoing cleanup work at the Combermere School. He made the comment after touring this morning, this afternoon, along with a delegation from the ministry, the principal of the school, the board chairman, and officials from the ministries of health and labor. Uh, our view that we always have to create a kind of environment which is good for students and teachers and all those who operate within any school environment. And that is why the high level of alacrity applied to this particular enterprise. Um, un unfortunately, um, we we've seen in some parts of the media massive speculation and uh, the implanting of ideas that are in fact not real to whatever we undertook here um, at Combermere. The onset of chronic non-communicable diseases is an issue the Barbadian workforce cannot ignore. In fact, Minister of Labour, Social Security and Human Resource Development Senator Dr. Esther Beyer wants employers to take greater responsibility in promoting healthy lifestyles and well-being in the workforce, as NCDs have no boundaries. She made the call during a seminar organized by the Barbados Light and Power Company in observance of the ILO World Day for Safety and Health at Work. They do have an impact on workplace well-being. They have an impact on uh, time lost from work. Many organizations in Barbados uh, would have reported lost time because of persons with chronic non-communicable diseases. They're, when they're not feeling well, when they have medical appointments, time that they spend in hospital. Uh, many persons are on sick leave now, which is likely to, to become a prolonged sick leave, but in the meantime that they're still employed and they're still uh, being funded by organizations. Um, and so that becomes a cost to on uh, or, or, or entities. Minister Byer says employee productivity can be affected by their working conditions. She wants Barbados to be part of the global change in safety and health. A key component in this change will be the embracing of a culture of prevention on occupational safety and health. Barbados must also be a part of this changing culture. At the national level, building and maintaining a culture of prevention requires the utilization of all available means. As such, cooperation between government and its social partners, which has always fostered social and economic process in this country, will be vital as we seek to create a national culture of safety. 
Managing Director Designate of the BLNP, Roger Blackman, says the power company is committed to health and safety practices for its employees as it is an ingrained part of their culture. We at Light and Power have always put employee safety first, as evidenced by the focus within our HSCQ policy, which was established in 2007. That's it over on the wall there. And we, we update that every two years. Um, and by our rigorous pursuit of the highest standards of safety management and best practices, as we pursue our goal of world-class safety within the Amera group of companies. Well, it's just three working days to go before the deadline for filing income tax returns for 2014, and Barbadians are being advised to do so to avoid any penalties for late filing. This advice from communications officer at the Barbados Revenue Authority, Erica Lazar, who says the lines at the BRA have been getting longer since last week as Thursday's deadline approaches. From about Friday, we were starting to see a lot more people. Um, the lines that you can see about oh, 30 to 40 people right now. Um, we just want to make sure that people do not wait to the very last minute to come and, and file their income tax returns. If they have any issues, do not hesitate to come down here. Or if they can't remember their passwords and, or their email addresses, make sure that they, they contact us. They can also email us at bramail at barbados.gov.bb. But um, it's not too bad. I thought it would be a lot worse, but it's not too bad. And Ms. Lazar says the wait is not long with the lines moving quickly, pointing out that the maximum wait is around 15 minutes if it's a complicated matter. She says minor issues like changing passwords are taking about three minutes to resolve. She also disclosed that Barbadians are continuing to receive their tax returns for 2013. The returns have not stopped. They're continually going out. Um, they go at different rates depending on the funds available, but it's still um, continuing, still ongoing. Well, tomorrow is National Heroes Day in Barbados, a time when the country celebrates the contribution of outstanding Barbadians. This afternoon, a CBC team took to the streets to find out what significance the day holds for them. For me, it means freedom. These heroes, they fought for us to be able to do a number of stuff without having any withdrawals, any holdbacks. So, I, like I said, I teach my children the importance of these heroes and why we should focus on them, why we should commemorate this day for them, because it, they fought for our freedom. I'm thankful for the people that fight for our country and that we are in the place that we are because of them. Well, for me personally, it's something to be proud about. We as a people, um, you know, national heroes, they fought for us, how the advancements of education, and also um, to help out Barbados on the map, basically. And due to technical difficulties, we don't have our usual interactive question and answer segment tonight. But stay with us. We will have more news after this break. Take the 11 Plus Challenge to win an Android tablet from DE Computers Unlimited. Which word will correctly complete the sentence? We bought two cartons or cartoons of Farmer's Choice Beef Burgers. Text A for cartons, B for cartoons to Digicel short code 2011. Happy birthday to you, Happy birthday to you. Are you looking so fast? Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like coal. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Catch the sun power. St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival, April 30th to May 10th. Visit stlucianjazz.org for more information. 
Your granny might have said it, but it's so, so true. One hand can't clap, one hand can't clap. New world, new style, the truth working for you. One hand can't clap, one hand can't clap. Let's go up our rates, and go up our rates. Be a team player, do the job that's our work. Get together, do it together. One hand can't clap, one hand can't clap. Celebrating the power of teamwork. A message from Mayday from the Barbados Workers' Union. Police are tonight warning homeowners not to open their doors to people they do not know. Crime Prevention Officer Station Sergeant O'Neill Small says unless people provide some type of identification proving they are who they claim to be, keep the doors locked. Station Sergeant Small was speaking to residents and homeowners in the Eden Lodge and surrounding areas at the Soroptimist Village last evening to discuss plans for a neighborhood watch. He says that being kind can sometimes be dangerous. There was an elderly gentleman one time, three young boys between the age of 16 and 14 came up, they were asking for bottles. And because his heart went out, he wanted to give these young men something. He went to look for the bottles and leave them by his side door standing. And by the time he returned, the few cents he had on the table and the pieces of jewelry was gone. So you need to be careful. And the chairman of the Caribbean Association of Security Professionals, Oil Reed, says the time has come for private security agencies to assist the police with patrols through communities. I manage this weekend station and I know what it is to, 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 to police over 80,000 people. This weekend station is responsible for about six res, um, uh, uh, national housing estate facilities, which in itself requires a very significant deployment of resources to deal with those issues that may, will occur, uh, occur in those areas. So we are talking about threats and response to persons who are unable to get along with these other issues of conflict. But above and beyond that, in a community of over 80,000 persons, it is the largest station area in Barbados. You are also required to respond to accidents. You are respons responsible for responding to crime. A 24-year-old St. Lucie youth has been remanded to Her Majesty's prison at Dodds on a charge of murder. According to Police Public Relations Officer Acting Assistant Superintendent David Welch, Jamal Kamal Husbands of Husbands appeared in the Holtown Magistrates Court today charged with the murder of 40-year-old Wayne Albert of Broomfield No. 1 St. Lucie. Lawmen say Husbands is expected to reappear at the Holtown Magistrates Court on May the 22nd. Albert was reportedly shot dead last Friday evening around a quarter to five during an altercation at Broomfield Road in the same parish. Staff of the Barbados Water Authority are expected to move into their spanking new headquarters in the Pine from June. This information from Chairman Dr. Atlee Brathwit while speaking on the CBC News and Current Affairs program, The People's Business, last night. If you're getting ready to move in on the 1st of June, yes. um, you, uh, when you drive by, you can see the, the, the building. It's visible. And uh, certainly, we recognize that this building will certainly make our staff more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And uh, we pay a lot of, t of attention to ensure that our human resource is comfortable. Also, the question of internal communication. When we have most of our staff in one place, certainly that will improve the internal communication substantially. And also on the program was the acting general manager, Dr. John Mwanza. He says the falters still owe the BWA millions of dollars, adding that the utility company has been trying to put arrangements in place to settle those arrears. Last time we looked, it would have been about 20 million, but you have to remember that the 20 million includes uh, accounts where persons have queried the amount that they, just like the lady mm -hmm. indicated there, that have to be uh, cleared out. You also have a, a accounts that will basically eventually have to write off. So that all that money is not available for the water to, for the water authority to to recover. And project manager Lawrence Cumberbatch says the authority only uses springs at Newcastle and Codrington, the only two which have proven to be reliable. A number of the springs have been tested already in terms of sustainability 
in terms of providing water. And that is why we are down to only using the two springs that can provide the quantity of water that we want. Now, it's very easy to say, um, damn the springs. But um, let us give an example. Um, most, of us, most of our wells, let us say, we produce a minimum of about 20,000, 50,000 gallons per day. Mm -hmm. And a number of springs cannot produce that on a sustainable basis. So that's why we are down to the two springs. So that is something that was actually considered, I mean, over the years. I remember there were some tests done at even um, the, some springs in St. John in terms of sustainability, and they found that to be sustainable from a water supply point of view. Well, it was one of the biggest crowds on record at Farley Hill. Thousands tried their best to get the perfect vantage point to see their favorite artists take to the stage at the Digicel Reggae on the Hill as the Reggae Festival reached its climax. Many of the big acts were also surprised at how much the show has grown. Shane Seely has a snapshot now of the hill. We knew we really came here to see you. Beanie Man, of course. I enjoyed the show, and I was I here to see Beanie Man. Beanie Man. And the king of the dance hall didn't disappoint the thousands of adoring fans at Farley Hill just for his performance. After Beanie Man told CBC he's impressed with what reggae on the hill has become, saying it's events like these that keep people coming back to Barbados. Reggae on the hill is my second term yeah. and I really respect and enjoy. But Beanie wasn't the only crowd puller on the hill. I came to see Beanie Man on your especially Luciano. I was hoping for tomorrow that just and pray. Conscious reggae star Luciano, always with energy to burn, back on the hill for the first time since 2006. He says Barbados is proof that reggae music is more than just dance hall. I feel good about the love and the response from the audience here in Barbados because really and truly, over the years, and I, and I see the package, it's good artists foundation artist and I'm, I'm one of them so I'm very glad very glad to know that the reggae is still strong and going kicking because sometimes they feel like only dance all artists can't get a crowd not not so you know people love music and they're singing along with you know, with the songs song for song and word for word so we know that it, it, it is in the heart of the people and it was a dream come true for Ayotain who described his performance as an accomplishment. I've been working to, to the actually perform on the hill for years, you know what I mean? And it's not just acting alone, you have a lot of people who contribute to acting. Other people play high acting songs, them talk about acting daily and radio station, TV station, the people them in the street, you know, gravitate to acting. It was a slow process, but steady, you know what I mean? I would still have much, much more to offer, you know? I am looking forward to close reggae on the hill one of the days. And uh, taking the crowd by storm with what was considered by many the performance of the night, Barrington Levy. To keep an carriage, you've got to water it. So you see, something special is in my garden. Got it? Black, black, go out. What's going on out there now? It's huge. Very huge. I, I, enjoy, I enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed it. But it wasn't all about the performances. Queen Africa, graceful as ever, came off the stage to give fans a Kodak moment. And backstage, some lucky fans got to meet other reggae stars face to face. And as you can see right behind me, the media bombarding Beanie Man trying to get their last interviews. The people, they got their money's worth. As you heard most of them say, they wanted to see Beanie Man. They got the full performance, a fitting end to the Digicel Reggae Festival 2015. And I'm Shane Seeley for CBC News. And thank you, Shane. Well, still to come, a look at some of the stories making headlines across our region. And remember